Hello, church. How are you blessing the world with the love of God today? That was our question from yesterday. That's what we're free to do in Jesus, and it is a wonderful gift to share. In fact, this is the hallmark of what it means to be in God's family. This is how you know that you're in God's family. You are actively blessing all the families of the earth with the love and grace of God. Sometimes this is easy, joyful, fun work. Other times, it's not so easy, but it is still who we are. Let's keep reading this passage from John's Gospel. Remember, Jesus is addressing some of the Jewish people who are leaning toward believing in him. John, the gospel writer, actually says they, they do believe in him, but that's all getting ready to change. Let's read chapter 8, verses 39 to 46. They, the Jewish people who are believing in Jesus or trying to believe in Jesus, they say, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would be doing what Abraham did. But now you are trying to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. This is not what Abraham did. You are indeed doing what your father does. They said to him, we're not illegitimate children. We have one father, God himself. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I came from God and now I am here. I did not come on my own, but he sent me. Why do you not understand what I say? It is because you cannot accept my word. You are from your father the devil, and you choose to do your father's, that father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks according to his own nature, for he is a liar and the father of lies. But because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? If I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? Whoever is from God hears the words of God. The reason you do not hear them is that you are not from God. The intensity of the conversation now is increasing tremendously. The Jewish people to whom Jesus is speaking recognize that Jesus is questioning their beloved status as children of Abraham. He has offended them by equating them to slaves rather than to children of God through Abraham. Their whole religious structure hinges on the idea that they are the children of Abraham and thus the children of God through God's promise to Abraham. In our country, this might be somewhat akin to a person questioning your patriotism as a proud American citizen, especially if you were born an American citizen. We don't like when people question our patriotism. We might say Jesus has quit preaching and gone to meddling. <laughs> Jesus begins making an important distinction between the behavior, the lived faith of the true children of God, and the coming behavior of those standing before him. It's a little odd because they really haven't done anything yet, but he knows what they will do, and it isn't pretty. He knows their hearts are already leaning toward killing him. He even names this in his dialogue with them. Of course, they deny and deflect and what we now say, gaslight Jesus, but it doesn't change the truth of what he's saying. The kind of behavior for which Jesus is looking is, is twofold. One, believing in him and in the one who sent him. And two, doing the work of God, which is another way of saying doing the work of revealing God to the world in the way of Jesus. Jesus is still today looking for this behavior. Is he finding it in you and in me? Only you and I can answer that question. Let's pray together. Lord, we do believe. Help us to do. Help us to live the way of Jesus. Amen.